people are ready to get back to work. And a big part of getting back to work is sports. And I'm starting to get even more optimism from a variety of places that sports is going to return. And I want to hit this right off the start for you guys. Uh, Scott Boris, who is a obviously big-time baseball agent who has many of the most famous baseball players as his clients, wrote an opinion piece that is going to get a lot of attention today for the New York Times. And his opinion piece is pretty straightforward. I'm going to read you some of the lines from it because I thought it was very well said. His opinion piece is headlined, We Have to Bring Baseball Back. And then the opening is, Time and time again, baseball has helped our country recover and come together in times of loss. It can help us during the pandemic too. Uh, And then I thought this was really well done because it puts baseball in a historic context. And here is the open to his his, uh, op-ed, his essay here, uh, in the New York Times this morning. In some of America's darkest moments, the country has turned to Major League Baseball to bring hope and normalcy back to everyday life. It's going to sound a lot like this show, uh, so I got to applaud Scott Boris for putting himself out there. It happened after the attack on Pearl Harbor when President Franklin Roosevelt issued what became known as the Green Light Letter to Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis. President Roosevelt wrote, I honestly feel that it would be best for the country to keep baseball going. He even surprised the team owners by requesting more night games, not fewer, as a source of relaxation and escape for weary workers coming home from their wartime shifts. Nearly 60 years later, baseball again helped reassure the nation after the September 11 attacks. In the first game back in New York, 10 days after the towers fell, Mike Piazza's home run in the eighth inning became a potent sign that our healing had begun. The very next month, and a lot of you are going to remember this regardless of your politics, we all felt the gravity of the moment as President George W. Bush walked onto the field at Yankee Stadium before the first World Series game in New York since the attacks. Alone and secretly wearing a stiff bulletproof vest, he climbed to the top of the mound and fired a strike. The pain of those we lost would never leave, and the rebuilding was only just beginning. But at that moment, America, as an idea, roared back to life. And this is, again, Scott Boris's words. Time and time again, baseball has helped our country heal. Whether it be David Ortiz giving a speech to rally a city after the Boston Marathon bombing, or the A's and Giants aiding a jittery Bay Area after a deadly earthquake that interrupted the 1989 World Series. Baseball has been there in times of loss to help our country and our cities move forward. Uh, And he continues to write about the coronavirus, and he says uh, that basically it's important that baseball be back. It is time again, he says, for baseball to serve. The political universe, and then he cites a lot of different people, uh, all suggest that it makes sense to uh, bring baseball back, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, who is a big Washington Nationals fan. In a recent study, nearly 170 million people 12 or older identified themselves as Major League Baseball fans, the highest number in the past 25 years. The first full month of the 2020 regular season has been missed, but baseball should start up again soon, says Boris, to, uh, says Scott Boris, to provide a release for our country desperately in need of live sports entertainment. And here he gets into some details. I'm in constant communication with players, owners, and front office executives, and from what I'm hearing, they're focused on getting baseball back. Even before we know when, where, and how we will have an opening day, we should give players the chance to ramp up for major league competition. Uh, He believes the first step is to get players back to spring training style camps as soon as possible. He says, players want to be with their teams now. 
safely preparing for the season at spring training. Uh, players would need all these different details about the way that it can take place. And again, I would gar- I would encourage you to go read this uh, to go read this op-ed piece that is up in the New York Times today. Uh, but he said, while initially the fans won't be there, MLB stars can shine brightly on TV screens across the United States and across the world this summer and fall. Televised games each day and night can give fans a unifying feeling, something to look forward to, something to discuss, something to live vicariously through, and a reason to cheer. The millions of baseball fans in America can continue to do a small part by watching a game from home. Uh, All right, so that is Scott Boris. That doesn't happen by accident. Scott Boris has let everybody know, based on the many superstar players that he represents, I'm sure he talked to all of his superstar clients before he wrote this piece. He probably shared this with them. This is an important moment in terms of sports returning to have someone like Scott Boris go public with the idea being, hey, it's time to get back to work. And I believe he is right. I think he's right for all facets of the American economy, but I think in particular, the world of sports, it's time to get back. Uh, And we've seen this before. I I know people want to act like the coronavirus has never happened before or a situation like the coronavirus has never happened before. But I read uh, and saw a picture, and I'm reading the the great pandemic about uh, the 1918 flu epidemic. 625,000 people in 1918 of the flu in this country, just this country. That's equivalent of over 2 million today. That was during World War I. They didn't shut down anything. There are pictures, I just tweeted one out, of college football fans showing up at the stadiums wearing masks and sitting in the crowds to watch uh, games take place. And I just tweeted one from Georgia Tech. You know if Georgia Tech fans were even willing to show up, there must have been a lot of other fans that were showing up as well. Uh, But we've lived through a pandemic like this before. Hopefully it'll only happen every hundred years or so. But we've never, we've seen... Uh, a lot of people die before. We've never seen anybody in in our lives has never seen the amount of people losing their jobs as we're seeing right now. So over 30 million tomorrow, the number will continue to go up. That's probably low. It's probably more like 40 million people have lost their jobs. We basically have created the Great Depression in this country. And as more details are coming out, we're finding out that this virus is far more common and far less deadly than the experts initially let us know. I saw a story that I tweeted out last night that the University of Kentucky, and there are many places that did this. They did this in Seattle with the Seahawks Stadium. Uh, You can text me and let me, tweet me and let me know other locations that did this. The University of Kentucky Hospital lost $160.7 million in its most recent quarter because they stopped elective surgery and because they spent millions of dollars turning their football facility, their indoor football facility, into a ability to host coronavirus patients. Inside the University of Kentucky football facility, the indoor, they were going to be able to host 400 coronavirus patients in an overflow hospital setting. They are taking down that entire hospital because they never were able to fill it up. And this is the story across the nation where all of the, quote, experts who predicted that our hospitals would be overrun. And in fact, that was, remember, the entire rationale for not going outside of our houses, for shutting down before the rationale became, became, oh, we don't have a vaccine. The rationale was we can't overload hospitals. What happened was no hospitals in America came very close to overloading. Even in New York City, They forecast that we were going to need 140,000 hospital beds. They ended up peaking at 19,000. So the experts, and again, I'm putting it in quotation marks, forecast 140,000 hospital beds maximum capacity. The maximum capacity ended up being 19,000. And as a result, we sent that ship up, uh, I believe it was called the Comfort, to dock in New York City. Almost nobody was on it. Almost nobody needed to be treated by that naval Uh, ship. We also turned the Javits Center 
into a coronavirus hospital, almost no one was ever admitted to the Javits Center. We spent billions of dollars across this country preparing for a wave of hospitalizations that never occurred. Just hasn't happened. In fact, what has happened is many hospitals have come close to bankruptcy because they stopped it, stopped elective surgery. And so you have to be careful about the decisions that you make and what some of the impacts can be that you might not have contemplated. And I th- believe there are a lot of places across the country where we built entire hospitals that have never come close to being used, not remotely close to being used. And so Scott Boris is 